Hello viewer, Eric the Car Guy here. One of the most asked questions I get all the time is about my air tools. So I decided to make a video just about my air tools. I know I've covered my toolbox before, I know we've covered some of this stuff, but we're gonna get a little more in depth. This way it'll save me some typing from uh, your questions that you have about my air tools. So why don't we start with the air compressor itself. Okay, let's start with the air compressor. I have a Campbell Hossfeld 26 gallon uh, compressor. It's a 1.7 horsepower electrically powered motor. Uh, it is a 5.6 SCFM at 40 PSI and 3.8 at 90 PSI with 150 PSI max. SCFM is standard cubic feet per minute. I'm not going to get into the whole standard cubic feet per minute kind of thing right here. It's not what this is about. But the important thing is it's a 26 gallon tank, 1.7 horsepower electric motor at the top, um, and it plugs into regular 110 outlet. So it's, uh, it's I personally think this is a good size for the DIY. Uh, 26 gallon it has, has suited me well for using just like my impact tools and things. Uh, I would like a little more oomph if, if I were to have my wish. I would love to have a 60 gallon version of this uh, and, and then run like metal lines in the shop and everything. But uh, this is what I have and it's actually served me quite well for a number of years. They give you a nice little handy chart up here for stuff that will work. Uh, most of your impact tools and, and that kind of thing. But once you start getting into like air drills and cutoff wheels and like that, you start getting into the red zone with a lot of this stuff. So, and so it's it's nice that they give you this chart to let you know what this compressor will work with. But uh, on the other thing is, I've got my air regulator adjusted all the way out, so it comes up to 125 psi. Um, whether or not it actually runs at that, uh, it's hard to say. I, I would say it probably runs a little, you know, probably closer to 95 uh, rather than the 125. But either either way, as far as my air tools that I've been using in the shop for years that you've seen me use in the videos. This is the compressor I've used. I think this is a good size for the DIY. So that's the air compressor. Oh, and one more thing. You'll notice this rusty stain on the floor here. It's because with air compressors, what you want to do is, is there's a valve down underneath that you want to open up every once in a while because as the air gets compressed, there's uh, water and in, in, in humidity in the air that collects in the bottom of the tank. So they keep the tank from rusting out and you just got to open that valve up from time to time and drain out that water. Here's my assortment of air tools. Um, I don't have the specifics on all these just because uh, I've had them for so long and I don't have the boxes or what have you to it. But I'm going to start down at the end with the smaller ones like the quarter inch air ratchets. I use the heck out of my quarter inch air ratchets as a flat rate tech working on Hondas. Uh, these are great for like buzzing off valve covers, timing covers, all that kind of stuff. What I really liked was this Mac that I had, but I've actually gone through a couple of these heads and I don't even think they make these anymore. Um, these were like this, this whole head is sealed up in here, but these were great for getting into tight spaces. They had lots and lots of torque, but I don't even think they make them anymore. And this one here is broken. So they, they had, they burned bright, but not really that long. However, this guy I've had for like ever. I almost think that somebody actually gave this to me when I first started out as a technician at the dealership. I think they had a spare and I've always gone back to this whenever this one's broke. And this one still works and it's still getting me through. It's a Mac Tools um, and it's, like I said, for small fasteners, I use it quite a bit. Not a lot of torque, so there's not a lot of like danger of breaking things. Now, Dale Earnhardt fans will note that I have a Dale Earnhardt Snap-on uh, 3 8 air ratchet here. I didn't buy it because it was Dale Earnhardt, I bought it because it was the only one they had on the truck. Uh, but you know, it's kind of cool. It's my little memorial to him. But uh, this, I don't use the 3 8 as much. I usually use this if I'm in a tight spot and I can't get in and I, I don't feel like turning it by hand. So this, this does not get used nearly as much as this does. This is probably one of my most used tools. Uh, cutoff wheel I got from Snap-on, which is actually a blue point. Uh, I'm not sure who makes this for them, but it's uh, this used to have like a shield around the outside, but I it actually broke off. I can't remember if it broke off or if I took it off, just because it was a lot easier to get in where I needed to get in. 
And, and always, you know, wear your safety glasses when you're messing around with this stuff. But this, this one has served me quite well, this cutoff wheel. Now, uh, I've laid out both of my 3 8 impacts here. Now this was my older one. I got this one from Snap-on. I don't remember the exact name. I mean, it had a nice balance to it. Um, it's, it's an all-metal body, which was nice. It's a little bit heavy, but there was a couple of things I didn't like. First of all, the torque on this one was not as good. I didn't like the trigger mechanism, and this, if you were in a tight spot, could get kicked from one side to the other. But, you know, just about anything works that way. But this one was not nearly as torquey as this Mac one that I got, which I suspect is an Ingersoll Rand. It used to have a sticker on here telling what it was, but I've used it so much. Um, this one's actually a lot lighter. This is how you adjust the torque on this one. Um, on, this, on this one, you actually adjust the torque by turning this little knob here. Um, you can actually dial it in to, to be more or less torque. Same with this, but this one, you turn the switch on the back. But I use these extensively. A 3 8 impact, really useful. And these days, <clears throat> I don't know, I, I might be considering using an electric version of this. Just because one of the things that's always gotten in my way is my air hose. So having those electric technology, the battery technology that we have today, um, having the freedom of moving something around in an engine compartment and not having to worry about uh, the air hose getting in the way or making it so you can't get a certain angle on it, something like that, uh, you know, not a bad idea. But, but I like this gun much better than this gun when it came down to it. Lots and lots of questions about this and I actually was able to look it up since I did have the model number. This thing was rated I think at 780 foot pounds of torque which this one I think is rated at 600 something because this was like a really early version of this uh, particular model Ingersoll Rand uh, gun and I have had zero problems with this. The only thing that's happening is this ring is starting to get worn so it doesn't hold sockets like it used to hold sockets so they fall off. Actually all the rings on these tools are getting worn off so you can if your sockets start to fall off, you can just replace these rings and it helps hold your sockets on there better if, if that's what's starting to happen to you. Um, you change direction on this one this way. Uh, same with this one. That's why I think that this is also an Ingersoll Rand uh, version, even though I believe it might have been badged as a Mac. I'm not real sure. can't remember. I think it even used to have a cover on the outside of it. Um, but in addition to that, uh, this one also, like if you get it into a tight spot or something, you can get these stuck in between and then you lose all your torque. So you have to make sure that these are all the way pushed. But these, these are just, I don't know, a 3 8 impact is very useful. Half inch impact you're mostly using to take your wheels off, but it's a Ingersoll Rand 2135Ti half inch impact. And like I said, the, the current ones that I looked up are rated for like 780 foot pounds. I don't believe this one was capable of that. I think it was 600 something when I got it. But still, it's quite a bit. However, this will not take off a Honda crank bolt. You still have to use the tool. Those things are on there like, you know, they want to live there forever and ever. But have served me quite well for many years, getting, getting a bit old. Um, and last I have, uh, well, almost, almost last, I have my air drill from Mac. Not sure who makes this for Mac, but one of the things that I did was instead of just running the straight air pressure into it, this is an air pressure regulator that I have that I can um, dial in how much air I have going through this. That way I uh, don't have this thing spinning so fast it burns up my drill bits. So the, these you can get, you know, pretty much any place you get like pneumatic tools, you can get one of these. And I just put it on before the air chuck and then when I, when I use this I can actually dial in the speed that I want from this drill. So this is nice. A lot of times I use my electric drill, but I bust this guy out, you know, on occasion when I really need to do like lots of drilling and the battery of my electric drill is burned out or something like that. Plus this one's got a smaller footprint than my electric. This one's like really small and it will get into some tight spaces. Not those really tight spaces where you might need an angled version of this, but it's like I said, served me well. But the air regulator helps keep me from burning up my bits. And last we have my air hammer. Um, you can buy less expensive versions of air hammers if you don't use it a lot, but I did use this and I, I use this quite a bit. And this is this tool has honestly saved my butt quite a few times. You should even use it to like knock fasteners loose that uh, had issues. And this, this extra thing here is just to direct the air. But this, you know, there's 
I, I can't really say it's anything special. It's just an air hammer, but it, it's a quality piece. You can just tell. I mean, I've I've picked up some of the ones at Harbor Freight and Sears and like that. Those will work if, if you're the DIY, but if you're a professional and you're using these kind of tools to make your living, you don't want them to break because when they do and you have to borrow them from somebody else, they get all mad at you or they give you dirty looks or something like that. Or if you break it, you're into them for another air hammer besides your one that's already broken. So as a professional, try to buy the best tools you can afford, period. I mean, this is your livelihood. One last thing that I'll touch on with this, uh, I'm not really advertising for Mac here, but this is air tool oil. Now. I've heard a couple of different things on this. Some people say, you know, uh, never oil your air tools. I, I have heard people say that. Uh, they swear by it, that's what they do, it works for them, whatever. But personally, what I do is every so often, I'll just take a couple of drops, just down in the end. That's about it. And then I'll use the tool. And there's one more thing I think you'll note here. Uh, this is full of lithium grease, is what it's full of. And you'll notice on some, like this one right here, there's like a little ball that fits into there. So you can just take this and then you can pump a bunch of grease into it. I'm not going to do it right now. But that lubricates the bearing on the inside. My uh, half inch impact also has one of these, you'll note, here. So I've, I've just, I've always lubricated my tools. I mean, I'm not like on it all the time. But I notice like when I, whenever I add the oil, if I'm not getting quite enough torque, I add a little bit of oil, it seals a little better, it gets a little more torquey as a result. Uh, and you know, I've had like, like this impact, I've had well over 10 years. Same, same with most of the stuff really. I've had for quite, you know, just about 10 years. I know this one's way older than that. And that's, that's how I've taken care of them. So I mean, even something that, that is a power tool like this can last if it's a quality part and you take care of it. Like I said, uh, I get lots and lots, mass questions about air tools and using air tools and what I'm using. And I hope this video is actually going to clear that up for you. So um, anyway, uh, that's how I take care of them. That's what I'm using. And that's what I wish I had. Anyway, I'm Eric the Car Guy. You can always find me at uh, Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus, and always at EricTheCarGuy.com where you can visit if you have automotive questions. In addition, uh, I post videos on Mondays and Fridays here at Eric the Car Guy, so you can visit me there when you need to. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, be safe, have fun, stay dirty, and I'll see you around. <laughs>